Well, we've been talking about this Jobs and Skills Summit for weeks and finally it is upon us. Tomorrow, leaders will gather in Canberra. The crowd is very union heavy, but it also includes university heads and some of Australia's most prominent business leaders. The last thing any of us need is this descending into a talk fest. We need outcomes. So joining me live is the Business Council of Australia CEO, Jennifer Westacott. You're a very busy woman, so we thank you for your time, Jennifer. First yes. of all, looking at the You're guest welcome. list, are the right people around the table? Look, I think broadly that's they are. I mean, people are always going to argue about 140 people who should be there, who shouldn't be. I think the thing that the government's done to give them great credit for this is that leading up to the summit, They've had a series of roundtables with a much wider group of people. Uh, and, and I think they're intending to continue to do that as they develop the white paper after the summit. So, look, I think, you know, people are going to argue about around the edges, but I think broadly that's the right people who should be there. Can we really wait for a white paper to get some of these things done? I mean, jobs and skills, filling worker shortages needs to be done yeah. uh, about six months ago. So what are the immediate outcomes that you would like to see on Friday afternoon? Yeah. Look, it's a really good point. And I think the government's made it clear where there's agreement, let's get on with it. So if we reach agreement on the direction of migration, and I think the important thing about the summit on migration is not just number, it's two things. How do we catch up? But the really important thing, Laura, on the summit is to get the proper big reset. What's the role of migration? How do we make sure it's driving the economy? How do we move people into, into permanent pathways? How do we get the focus on permanent? How do we get the focus on skill? Those are the big conversations, but in the short term, We've got to get action, and the government's taking action on this to get those visas processed to deal with those shortages. You know, if there's agreement on fixing the skill system, and I think there is a broad agreement, you would have seen stuff that we've released with Aki, AIG and, mm. and the ACTU this week. Let's get on with that. Let's give Jobs and Skills Australia their kind of, you know, first three months job description and get on with it. Uh, if there's agreement about, uh, you know, what we can do around women's participation that's in addition to what we're doing now, let's get on with it. If there's agreement about moving or removing disadvantaged workers' barriers, which I think are something we should all be really working hard on as well as, you know, practical things to advance uh, Indigenous economic mm. well-being in Australia, let's get on with it. And if we can make progress on industrial relations, let's get on with it. Right, but you're saying there, IR, and look, it has been a bit of a distraction in the lead-up to this summit. That shouldn't be uh, the sole focus uh, of what you're discussing around the table tomorrow and on Friday. Absolutely not. I mean, everyone loves that debate, obviously, and they love kind of portraying it as one side versus the other. <laughs> and, and look, you know, there's a couple of points to make. There are big resets the country has to do, and I've talked about some of them. One of the big resets which we'll be talking about over the next couple of days is this whole reset around industries of the future. How do we drive the decarbonisation of the economy? How do we attract new industries to Australia? How do we diversify what we're doing? How do we strengthen what we're already doing? How do we get the skills that are going to power up the economy? How do we make sure nobody gets left behind in that? How do we really get women participating to their full potential? Those are really important issues and it's, it's always, you know, I guess the media loves the discussion about <laughs> IR, but you're absolutely right. You know, what we have to say is what's the kind of workplace relations system we need to make sure that we achieve some of those things I've just talked about. Skilled Australians, driving new industries. Um, I'm just fixing this thing up. I never seem to get this right in this studio. Um, <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, making sure that, uh, you know, that we're, that we're using, making sure the IR system is fair, it's easier, more people are bargaining. But fundamentally, Laura, this has got to be a kind of big reset, not just a conversation about IR. Yeah, that, that's very true. I mean, one of the other things that did strike me and, and hasn't been noted uh, in much of the media this morning, there's a lot of university heads around this table. There needs to be also a focus on, on trades, doesn't there? Do we need to get past of this snobbery almost about, you know, everyone needing to go to university? Perhaps there are other pathways that people need to, young people in particular, need to be pushed down. Oh, you're spot on. And I, I think there are quite a few people from the vocational sector there, and so they should be. Mm. Uh, and I'm, I'm um, really looking forward to this discussion about skills because you're absolutely spot on. What we need is to make sure that young people leaving school have got multiple pathways that they can go into. We've got to restore the role of vocational education, restore the role of TAPES. We've got to make sure that, you know, the system, the tertiary system, universities and TAPES is a bit more interoperable from the learner's point of view. 
so that people can, can not just go to a dual university, they can actually blend their qualifications. We've got to get work-based learning recognised as part of the training system. We've got to fix apprenticeships, but we've got to take a more nuanced view of apprentices. It's not just trades, that's crucial, but new things like digital apprentices. So you're absolutely spot on. But some of this, mm. to your point, is cultural. You know, and that starts at school, making sure that young people understand that, you know, you know, there's a very, very good pathway going to a TAFE yeah. uh, as much as there's a good pathway going to a university. Well, unions have put a lot on the table going into this uh, summer. What is your red line? They've asked for, uh, for a lot. So is there anything that they've put on the table that goes a step too far for you? Look, you know, we've expressed our concerns about the multi-employer bargaining proposal. We've said, look, we understand the problem they're trying to solve, you know, that many people are not benefiting from the bargaining system, many low-paid workers are not benefiting from the bargaining system, many of those occupations are, uh, have very uh, heavy concentration of women. And we've said we think there are big unintended consequences with multi-employer bargaining. But mm. I, I, th I think for us the important thing is to say, well, let's see the proposition, let's see the problem we're trying to solve for, uh, in the meantime, can we get on and make the bargaining system easier? Can we make the boot test more simple, yeah. easier for people to use? But that's the point of the summit, Laura, is, is, is people not going to the summit with kind of, you know, red lines. The, the point of the summit is to sort of try and get an understanding and try and find, uh, if, you weigh the, if you like, the middle way. How do, we, how do we move forward, solve those problems, but not create 25 others? You should be a diplomat in your uh, whatever future role uh, you do take on. But finally, before I let you go, Jennifer, National Cabinet is meeting today. We're still living uh, under the, the shadow of COVID, really. Um, isolation rules uh, still exist. They're considering being mm. at least reduced down to five days. But also there's this $750 payment for close contacts and people who get COVID. Are those two things still holding business back? They are, they are. I mean, look, you've got to get the health and the isolation rules right so that we don't have, again, like these big outbreaks. So, you know, uh, the situation, you know, that some someone's at work with COVID uh, and, you know, they should have taken leave and then suddenly 20 people are off and that we're seeing that across many industries. But, you know, I think we've now got to try and make sure that we're in lockstep with the, the understanding of the medicine, that we can get the economy working and that we can make sure that when people are sick, they stay at home and that they don't create a problem for, you know, mm. five or six other colleagues in the workplace. And I, I'm really confident that, that National Cabinet is going to get to a kind of sensible landing spot today and then we can kind of keep the momentum going in the economy. Let's hope so. Jennifer Westacott, it's going to be a big two days. We'll see you in Canberra. Thanks very much, Laura.